policy making is going to be interesting under Obama. He's appointed an apparent uh, avowed socialist to uh, the, the energy czar or climate czar uh, position. Um, actually, it's both. It's environment and energy. A yeah, it's a new one, a new cabinet position that yeah. has, you know, there's no Senate confirmation or anything. It's just a, right. one of those uh, advisor Sorry positions. And I don't know what kind of authority she's going to have. Obviously pretty strong. She's been in the EPA. Uh, she's a lawyer, and but pr pretends to know all this stuff about the environment. So, uh, <laughs> you know, to be to back up all these scientific claims. Well, she's an environmental activist. That doesn't really mean that she knows much about the environment. <laughs> this means she's willing to use force on everybody. Yes. Uh, what is, but interestingly, as soon as she got appointed... The uh, International Socialists pulled her picture and bio off of their website, <laughs> probably at the behest of the Obama administration or somebody well, up you high. Well, you think that the Socialists would be proud to be, to be called Socialists, that, that they would be campaigning as Socialists, and that they would be upfront about being Socialists, but no, they, they can't do that. They have to uh, hide their agendas because Socialism has been discredited, well, but that doesn't seem to bother them. I think, well, that was what would tell you it had to have been an outside, very high authority to force them to take that off, because they all obviously want the biggest names they can on their commissioner list. I didn't recognize any others. That's a good point, Joy. So somebody way up there made them do that. <laughs> very interesting. That's you're right. Uh, I could only find, also, the, of course, the media is helping. I could only find one major newspaper that had an editorial on it. There's not even any articles. It was Seattle... Post intelligence. Well, that's article. because all the major newspapers are run by socialists. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. That's correct. Yeah, that's just not news to them at all. <laughs> that's one of those things I have to keep away from the public because the public is too stupid to understand. Uh, yeah. Now, worse than all that is what her idea is about this decoupling. So, first time I've seen this. Yeah, that, isn't that a clever word, decoupling? Oh, yeah, that is insidious. It, now, apparently, what th there's two strategies on this decoupling. First of all, you better explain what it means. Well, decoupling is the uh, decoupling of profit from productivity. For the power companies. For, for, for the electric companies. For, so for the production of electricity. Uh, uh, normally, uh, productivity and sales are coupled. The more you sell, the more profit you make. Uh, since she doesn't want the power companies to be in favor of selling more power. She wants to reward them for selling less power, so she's got to decouple the sales amount with, from the profit. Yeah. The, How are they going to do that? Well, it's it's uh, just, it's absurd. The, uh, the, cut, the first strategy is consumers paying more for less electricity. So, essentially, that's restricting the supply to artificially drive the prices up and punish consumption. That, that's, I think, their first basic strategy. The other one's a little more insidious. It's uh, keep the electricity prices the same, but then use taxpayer money to subsidize the difference between the profits from actual sales and the profits guaranteed by the government. And I had to think about that a long time. But it's a terrible perversion. It's fixing the price, then giving the utilities a guaranteed taxpayer-funded profit linked to less production. And the only way you could make that work is to ration electricity, is because people will still demand more and more. So the only... Well, that's right. Uh, the demand for electricity keeps constantly going up. Yeah. And so the supply uh, has to match the demand, or else you have to shortage it. You'd have I'll tell you what this policy is going to do is it's going to create shortages. It's going to give the power companies an incentive to create shortages so that they can sell less power and make more money. Right, right. And if it's in fact what Enron did when they had a monopoly on the distribution, they would intentionally create these shortages to drive up those uh, you know, extra high rates they were charging people under those contracts. But that was corruption. Uh, well, see, see, that's a different thing because that's that's a, a sort of a market. They've got the uh, you know bidding at, uh, prices, uh, price bidding, and they're buying from different uh, suppliers. And the and when when there's a shortage, then the price goes up, and some of the suppliers make a lot of money if they can buy. Now, but this is a totally different situation because you've got a power company. It's one supplier. Mm -hmm. see, all the, all their customers are captured by the fact that this one supplier of the power company is a monopoly in, that, in their area. And so they're not bidding. There's no bidding, right? It has to all be price fixing. 
Yep. And the government has to come in and say, we're going to we're going to change your absolute profit, not your not your rate of profit, but your absolute profit based on how you get your consumption to go down. Mm, yeah. So they'll continue to make them profitable by by force. Essentially, that's de facto nationalization. They're just controlling amount the amount of employees and capacity and productivity and so they're essentially taking them over if they do that well I, well, I wouldn't say that I, I'm, I'm not quite there yet in terms of that uh, it's not clear how they're going to do that it's not clear whether they know how to do it it's not clear whether it's possible to do it but it's just their goal yeah <laughs> certainly is their goal and I, I know it's going to work out they want to ration electricity they see consumption is bad too many people too much power too much carbon in the air and they've told everyone they're going to die from excess carbon, <laughs> carbon dioxide. <laughs> it's just. Are you breathing? Are you breathing now, Joy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh oh. I'm contributing to the problem. Part of the problem there. You know why don't they? It'd be it'd be the same. You see, if you're going to have to force rationing, you're you're basically limiting people's ability to grow. You're putting people at risk. You're shutting down their heat. You know, in in rolling blackouts, if that's the way they want to go, they're they're going to kill some people doing that. So why don't, they, why don't they just take the uh, easy way out? They don't care how many people they kill. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that matters is whether they achieve their goals. Well, they, just want to cut true? they just want to cut consumption. So, uh, I don't know, maybe an easier way would be to just decimate the population, you know, like uh, was it, uh, who, who the Romans or someone used to do that, take one out of every ten and kill them. And <laughs> uh, that's only with the, the Roman legions if they lost the battle. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> 